The next two videos, we're going to be looking at the precise definition of a limit. Now, up till now, we've had more an intuitive understanding of what a limit is. The last description we had read something like this. Given a function f is defined when x is near to a number a, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l. If we can get the values of f of x arbitrarily close to l by taking x to be sufficiently close to a, but not equal to a. Now we're going to formalize the arbitrarily and the sufficiently. So let's take a look. Here's the precise definition of a limit. So if f is a function defined on an open interval that contains a number a, it doesn't have to be defined at a itself, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l if the following happens. Now, if for every number epsilon greater than zero, there is a number delta greater than zero such that the following happens. So this is where the arbitrarily close and sufficiently close comes from. So now I am quantifying that. I'm saying I want to get epsilon. That's the number, how close I want to get to L. And epsilon is a positive number, but it's just bigger than zero. So that's how close I want to get to L. And the question is, how close do I need to get to A so that I can get that close to L? So if I look at the different distance between my function value and L, that distance must be less than epsilon. And we're going to look at an example to clarify this if it doesn't quite make sense. So if I am delta away from x, so the absolute value of x minus a, so that's how far I'll go away from x, if that's the distance between x and a is less than delta, then my y values distance will be less than epsilon. So let's look at an example. All right, we've got a function here. I factorize it 2x over x minus 1 over x minus 1. It's chosen very specifically. This function is defined everywhere except where x is equal to 1. We're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1. Now, we've already seen different ways to finding the limit. We've, we can see from the graph as x approaches 1, my y value will approach 2. So we know our answer is going to be 2. But now what we're going to do is use the precise definition of the limit to see how that works in this case. So we're going to zoom in. And we're going to say, well, how far, what x values can I choose if I want to get a certain distance away from 2? Because that's my, we know my limit value is going to be 2. So that limit value is 2. So in this case, it's 2. If I choose how far away I want to get to 2. Now, we said arbitrarily, so just past 2. It doesn't matter how far away, but I choose a number. So the distance between 2. And then that's epsilon and epsilon, that's the distance. So can I find an x value that will get me to that y value? So what is my delta supposed to be? How far away, what's the largest possible distance I can stray from that one? That if I use that as my x value, I will still land within epsilon away from 2. So let's make it more specific. We want to bring my y values arbitrarily close to 2 for values of x sufficiently close to 1. So let's pick numbers. Let's say I want to end up within 0.1 away from 2. So if that is 2.1 and that is 1.9, then I've got my epsilon value is 0.1 because that's how far I'm straying away from 2. So the question we're asking is... Firstly, can I get values of x that will get me there? Well, we can see it off the graph. I, there's a lot of x values I can substitute in that will land me in this band. So that's what we're looking for. So if we choose our epsilon, we want to say, can we find that delta value? So let's formalize it more in terms of this definition. We need to find a delta such that the x minus 1 is less than delta. So the distance from my x-coordinate to 1, if that distance is less than delta, then my distance from my y-coordinate to 2 is going to be less than 0.1. So the question is, what delta do we choose? Now, this function is very specifically chosen. We saw that it behaves the same as the function 2x, because it's 2x times x minus 1 over x minus 1. That's the function. And we know it behaves the same as 2x everywhere except where x is equal to 1. So if I look at here at 2.1 and at 1.9, what x value 
will get me to 1.9 if I want to be on the edge. Well, that'll be 0 0.95 because we're just looking at 2x. So if y is equal to 1.9, that's 2x, x is 0 0.95. Or if y is equal to 2.1, my x value is then 1.05. So we can see that we need to choose delta. How far can I go away? I'm going to choose delta equal to 0 0.05. And that was half of epsilon, and that gradient of that straight line does lead me there. So that's the delta I want to choose. So what are we saying? We're saying if we choose any x value that is within 0 0.05 away from 1 on either direction, then my y value will land within 0 0.1 away from 2. All right. So let's say we want to zoom in a bit more. Let's say we want our epsilon to be 0 0.01. Can I find x values that will get me within 0 0.01? So that will be then 1.99 and 2.01. Well, of course, we're still working with a straight line. So we know those x coordinates are just 0.995. 1.005, because this line behaves the same as the straight line 2x, x, everywhere except at 1. So everywhere else, it behaves like that. So any number in that range, if I substitute it in, I will end up in this band. So what do we do? We choose delta equal to 0 0.005. And so we can continue. I can keep choosing epsilon values that are closer and closer to 0. So as long as epsilon, that's the guiding rule, as long as epsilon is greater than zero, so it can be 0 0.0000001, I will be able to find a delta that gives me a range how far away I can move from one to get close enough, to get that close, epsilon close to two. So that's how these, the precise definition works. Now, that was straight lines. Now, we're going to see how to use it algebraically in the next video, but just to show you, as soon as my line isn't a straight line with a set gradient, as soon as I have a curve, it gets more complicated. Because in this case, if we look at the limit as x approaches 1 of this function x cubed, well, we know as x approaches 1, my y value approaches 1. So that limit value is 1. Now, if I choose epsilon, let's choose epsilon to be it's always greater than zero, so let's say let epsilon be equal to 0 0.1. If I want to be 0 0.1 away from 1, how far away can I stray on my x value? So we want to know what is that delta value. Now, what you need to notice is the delta values. Now, these aren't very accurate. The delta values are not going to be the same because my function is x cubed. So if I want the x values for those exact y values, it's going to be approximately, this one I'm giving a lot of space, 0 0.96548. This one is going to be 1.0332. So they are not far the same distance away from 1. So there's two options. There's my delta 1, which is, I'm not even going to say equal to, because it's we're rounding off. It's approximately equal to, how far is this one away from 1? 0. 0345. In the opposite other direction, my delta 2 value is about 0.0332. So this one's a little bit closer than this one because the line is a bit steeper here, or the curve. So the question is, well, which delta do I choose? Well, we want to know what is the largest distance I can stray away from 1 to still land me within 0.1. On this side. So I can't stray more than the smallest of these two because if I move 0.34 away then in the positive direction it's going to cause trouble. I'm going to be out of that range. So we choose the minimum. So we say let delta be equal to the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. So this example is just to show you that it's, if it's not a straight line then it gets a little bit more complicated. Now we've used exact numbers here. In the next video, I'm going to show you algebraically how to use the precise definition of a limit to find a limit value for linear functions.